This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories, and welcome to a return to the Clone Wars Weekly Review. I am sorry that I did not have a video for the last two weeks since two weeks ago I was sick and really didn't want to be putting so much effort into this video because I both had a paper to write and I also did not feel good enough to put in the time after that to just make this video and then last week I had finished up finals and everything and just was way too tired to be able to go in make one of these since I want to make it look as good as possible but since I am back and just have the time I'm going to restart on the series so I will be doing the Zero of the Heart arc which will follow the episodes from seasons 3 and season 1 since there is a gap between these and they continue the story Padme Amidala is throwing a massive party to help convince one of the senators, Senator Aang, to vote with her on the military oversight committee. And with this, she is trying to make sure everything is perfect since he is a very precise person who wants everything to be perfect. And with this, she is with Anakin and 3PO and R2. 3PO is being even more precise with everything and irritating both Anakin and Padme. They quickly realize that the Jogan fruit, which is needed to be put on a cake that Senator Aang really enjoys, is missing. And Anakin sends 3PO and R2 to go and get the fruit so it can be placed on the cake. Conveniently, at the same time, Cad Bane has been put on a mission to take the droid of Padme Amidala to get the plans for the Senate building from him. And scoping out, he wrongly assumes that C-3PO is the droid he is looking for, and goes after 3PO. At this, but before he does that, 3PO is able to buy the Jogan fruit, which he is scammed on, and although R2 is pointing this out, 3PO silences him, and the recently rebuilt Kodo 360 goes and offers to take them to a droid spa. Although 3PO is hesitant, R2D2 really does want to go, thinking they would have plenty of time. And as R2 goes in to get cleaned, 3PO is taken by Cad Bane and begins to be tortured while trying to get information out of him. Cad Bane quickly realizes that 3PO does not have his information in him, and 3PO accidentally slips up saying that R2-D2 has the information R2 has been fully cleaned up and is going out to look for 3PO. Quickly realizing something is wrong, he begins to run from the assassin droid sent after him that is trying to hunt him down. Although he does manage to successfully evade him, they go and threaten 3PO, saying how they will destroy him, and R2 decides to go to help his friend. As R2 goes, the information is taken out of him. And Cad Bane, knowing that they need to keep up appearances, wipes the memory of the recent events and sends them back. Padme is beginning to panic because she needs to go and get this cake out and 3PO and R2 have not been back. And they're beginning to wonder where they are. 
right before the cake is about to be taken out. 3PO and R2 return and Anakin is able to get it to the kitchen and to have the cake made. Although things are pretty bad when Padme tells 3PO he did a magnificent job and 3PO will not shut up about it. Meanwhile, Cad Bane has brought the plans back to the people who employed him, turning out that it is Jabba the Hutt, and Jabba has a meeting with the Hutt Council to see if they should go and bring Zero the Hutt out of prison. They quickly agree and go to Cad Bane to have him attack the Senate building to take the members of the Senate hostage. Of course, not the Senate himself, since no one could truly get him, but they do this so they can get information out of him, which leads to Cad Bane beginning his mission. And once Cad Bane has returned to Coruscant, he begins to execute his plan with a team of bounty hunters. The starting off members of this include Aura Singh and a few other of um, the most notorious bounty hunters in the galaxy, including Rubano, a few IG units, and many more different people, including a weak way and more. And with this, they began to go and take out many of the Senate guards. At the same time, Anakin is visiting with Padme and having a conversation with her in her office. Padme does need to go down for a meeting, and Anakin does give her his lightsaber. And at this point, Anakin is forced to hide since he's not supposed to be there. And Padme, holding on to his lightsaber, goes down to meet with the other senators. Cad Bane is ready to execute his plan, and at this point he goes and begins to trap all the senators in the room, giving out the power to the senate building, and trapping everyone inside. He goes and contacts Chancellor Palpatine and demands that they release Zero the Hut. And with this, the only person who could prevent them is Anakin. But he does not have his lightsaber, since Padme currently has it. And the senators are being interrogated and forced when having their items taken by Cad Bane. Although Padme is able to successfully hide the lightsaber. Anakin is discovered and some of the bounty hunters are sent after him. And although he does do a good job trying to evade them, he is eventually captured and taken to the other senators. Palpatine, at this point, knows that he has to go and give up Zero. And with this, he does release Zero the Hut. And his Zero is picked up. The bounty hunters go and prepare to escape. And while they do this, we see how they have set him series of explosives with tripwires so no one can go. And as Cad Bane prepares to leave, he goes to detonate the explosives, but Anakin taking his lightsaber back is able to cut a hole in the ground to save the senators, and Cad Bane prepares to return Zero to the huts. At the same time, while trying to pursue Zero, a Unknown Jedi, likely either on Luminar, Unduli, or Barris Afi, are pursuing him, and an attack leads to the death of the parents of Trace and Rafa Marquez, and they are not able to catch Zero or Cad Bane. Once Cad Bane arrives on Nal Hutta with Zero, he turns him over to the Hut Council. As they begin to question him, it turns out that Zero has a hollow diary that has some incriminating evidence against the Hut Council that he is using to blackmail them. 
since they cannot make a move against him since if they didn't do, he will have this badge released and they can all be placed under arrest. And this will not be good for any of them, so they go and have Zero imprisoned until he gives up the information. At this time, Zero's ex, size Snoodles, goes and breaks him out and takes him to his mother, and she lets Zero use one of her ships to go and leave the planet since he is in danger. At the same time, Obi-Wan Kenobi is joined by his friend and fellow Jedi Master Quinlan Boss, who is an excellent tracker and has good connections to the underworld since he is an undercover agent for the Jedi. And he is able to use his connections to figure out that it was most likely the Hut Council who had Zero taken. So Obi-Wan and Quinlan go to the world of Nil Hutta, where Obi-Wan tries to peacefully question the members of the Hut Council, wanting to keep their alliance intact, although Quinlan Voss is a lot more aggressive, but is also able to use his abilities in psychometry, which is the ability to look into the past events tied to an object to see that Zero the Hut has been in here with him finding a cup that Zero did use, and the hunt is on, as Cad Bane is once again sent out to hunt down Zero and figure out where we want. Obi-Wan and Quinlan eventually reach Zero's mother's house and begin to question him, and she reveals that Cad Bane has already been there, and so is Zero, and they are both heading for the world of Teth. Once Zero arrives there, since he is first, he goes and collects the diary from his father's grave. But Sice Noodles, wanting revenge for Zero abandoning her, shoots Zero and kills him, taking the diary and going back to Jabba before anyone else does show up. And... Cad Bane and Obi-Wan and Quinlan show up around the same time, both finding the body of Zero. And although Cad Bane is fine with leaving, Obi-Wan and Quinlan try to arrest the bounty hunter, and they get into a massive fight where Cad Bane does manage to escape, and Obi-Wan and Quinlan are forced to go home with a major defeat. At the same time, Slice Noodles returns to Jabba and is paid out for collecting the bounty to get Revenge on Zero and bring back the Diary of the Hut Council. And she is greatly rewarded and this is really just a victory for the criminal underworld of the galaxy. Yeah, this is a decent arc. It is not my favorite for all of them. I think it does have a lot of flaws. Sort of with the first one and a few small things in the third one. Although I do love the episode Hostage Crisis. And it was a great ending to season one. I think that the first episode of this is a pretty weak one. And mainly stuff with some annoying characters being in... The third episode. I definitely think that Hostage Crisis is the strongest part of this arc and it's definitely above the other two. While I think that the third one, which I believe is The Hunt for Zero, it's really a really good episode. You just have the annoying character of Sice Noodles in it and Although she is not as annoying as she is in Return of the Jedi, she still isn't a great character, and one that didn't need to be added into Star Wars, and she is a character added in with the special editions. And just looking at 
Um, just a few other things with this. I think that, yeah, this is a, it's a good arc. It's definitely not my favorite. The first one, I think, is honestly a pretty weak episode. And although I do love 3 and R2 as characters, honestly, I just didn't think this one worked out too much. Didn't have too strong of a premise, and I just feel like they could have had a better way, or they just didn't need this episode at all, and could have just done the episode The Hunt for Zero as a finishing off to the Hostage Crisis storyline. And yeah, I think that that episode specifically brings it down, but the rest of this arc is solid. So let's take a look at my ranking. And with this, I give it a score of 83.8, putting it over the Battle of Christophsis and the Rescue of Jabba Sun, or the Clone Wars movie and the few episodes that surround it. I think it is just a little better with the episode of A Hostage Crisis. But I think it's below the Gunray arc where you have some great stuff like Layer of Grievous in that. Yeah, I think this is a very solid place to put it. I think it's definitely deserving to go there. I, mean, I want to know what you think. How would you rank these episodes? Do you think that they are good? Do you think they're bad? And which one's your favorite of them? Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you all in the next episode of Legends and Theories. Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment. Check out the video on screen, and may the force be with you.